they're cool, they're chillin', right? right. When it comes not to people chilling. of my generation, I, I, we are not chillin', and we're good with our <laughs> from his house and get a, the idea that Trump is an established brand. He's not an establishment politician, but he's established as New York, which is where most of our he's news happens. Person That's right. Day. News people, as much as a Kardashian as, is an element of our modern yeah. establishment as far as pop culture goes. Yeah. It matters. They want to call in right now to this program. To, if there was a phone on stage and, the, and one of the, like, the, any member of them, Trump or otherwise, we take the call. It's lame, but it's true. Paul, you are Mr. CNN. I want to play this idea out. Did you and those of us in the media throw this or shape this for Hillary? No, it's nuts. It's <laughs> Because these ideas have consequences. Most 
this will shock you, most politicians really do try to keep their campaign promises. They really do. And so we should listen to that. And so the promises that they make really matter. But it's why when someone runs and his cardinal issue is breaking up the banks, he's got to have an answer as to how he's going to do it. And he stumbled when he, he wasn't asked about some obscure sort of right. policy in Croatia. Right. It's like your central issue is I want to break up the banks. This is New York, right? Banks are a big industry in our state, the, the paper says. How would you break them up? How would that work? And he stumbled badly. And I think that was a huge mistake. But it's the media Bill, uh, you know, you, you've been involved in fundraising a lot. I'm curious your thoughts on... Uh, Bernie's approach to fundraising, right? Did that uh, did that hurt him against a candidate who uh, has a great relationship with Wall Street? No, I think that what Bernie was able to do, which is um, build on something that Howard Dean did, something that President Obama did, and something that he did uh, in an astounding fashion, proves that a campaign funded by individuals can actually make a massive change. Right? Um, on the I think it's worth it to give voters more credit right. than to say that the Washington Post controlled who, who determined the outcome of, of this race. The fact of the matter is, the media establishment is not going anywhere for a long time. Its power is going to be diminished year by year in the same way that broadcast news used to be the thing that tens of millions of Americans watched every night and like everybody tuned in and they saw it and it was like the small narrow band of information right. that we get. Now that number is like much smaller, but you know what? The broadcast news is still important. What Lester Holt tells the American people about what happened that day still makes a difference. So the smart people in this room and on this stage are going to be figuring out, well, okay, we showed what we could do with all of this money and all of this attention to almost win. Like, how do we actually build on that and do it in a smart way and accept the fact that the media establishment is a part of the conversation and move from there? Is it? Yeah. In terms, yeah. Um, in, in terms of uh, the campaign, if you want to talk about strategy and, and success and failure in terms of both money raising and media, um, the, the Sanders campaign raised a tremendous amount of money, 27 bucks a pop, and spend it just as quickly, and in some cases strategically and poorly managed ways. Hmm and did not reach the effect of gaining the votes they needed or delegates they needed, not super delegates, pledged actual human beings who were the result of fund, you know, actual campaigns, people walking into, into booths and, and voting their conscience, <coughs> outnumbered the ones that were for Bernie because some of the spending that they did was on these rallies, which is how we got ahead, but are way more expensive than boring ad buys, outreach, door knocking. They're, they're, much, they're great for visual impact. They absolutely move media to get eyeballs on you, and it's intrinsically the, the essence of how the Bernie campaign succeeded. It's also how it failed, because the, the, the systemology of how they raised money and, and spent it eventually had to capsize. Eventually, the teeter-totter got out of, out of balance in the, in, in the home stretch, and it was a tortoise and hare circumstance. And, and unfortunately for a lot of people, politics is, is, a, is the realm of, the, in all deference to Mitch McConnell, tortoise. The, um, the, the, it is a slow, unfortunately plotting process. And Trump supporters and Bernie supporters of a certain ilk have effectively surrounded themselves with a movement where revolution is the six-minute abs of American politics. Where I want to lose this weight, I want to be healthy, I want all the benefits of this, but I want a lap band to solve it for me. This vote, this time, this one election should end this for once and once for all. Rather than going, because establishment sounds boring, it sounds like grandparents, your old people are voting for the establishment. This is an established country with an established constitution. It needs revolutionary ideas. But the idea that you're going to turn the political system in and of itself, or even the banking industry on itself, in one election cycle is cartoonish. Yeah, this, that, is, this is exactly the, the, cartoon. the, the defeatist attitude yeah. that young people <laughs> Because he's saying, hey, yo, I have a revolution. You should 
look for me, he has concrete ideas. He has outlined ad nauseum in various speeches in every single debate that we've covered, and we've covered every single one of them. Yeah. Every <laughs> What he wants to do and how he wants to do it, and that's the reason why people are voting. What yes, Howard? What is naive? What is naive is the idea that therefore everybody agrees, right? And that therefore everybody clearly agrees with Bernie Sanders. The fact is that most Democrats didn't. Most Democrats did not want Bernie Sanders to be their nominee. You know, politics has. Uh, and, and especially but they the want those for the things he wants. Exactly. That's the hard part. That's the part that they want. want. Well, 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 but they want to be in the country. They want to be the country. The primary politics, politics has a calendar. Okay? It has a calendar. It starts here, and, and then you go through the southern states, you go here, and everything. Every, every four years, it has a calendar. Eight years ago, Hillary Clinton got caught on the wrong side of that calendar, thanks to people like Bill Burton, um, uh, when Barack Obama got a plea that she could never, she could never uh, over, overcame. Yeah. Um, this year, Bernie Sanders got caught on the wrong side of that calendar. He didn't do well enough in the early states to be in a position to catch up. Um, I'm sure you know a lot of people here voted voted for Bernie, despite all our best methods, to, our best efforts to suppress the vote. But, you know, guess what? In California, it didn't really matter. Wait, 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 let's, let's go back to a point that Anna made before, the one that has, 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 has deep meaning of people. You know, that she made a point that the night before the California primary, mm -hmm. media, MSNBC and CNN and others came out and said, you know, AP, like, the, the lead is too great, it is, it is now effectively over. Mm -hmm. And obviously that had an impact. Should media have not made that calculation? Yes! Yes! So media should not report information that we have. They should self censor. No, they should not self censor, but what they should there were several states that still had not voted and discouraged them. But they always do. They always do the math at a certain point for every single Arizona cycle. Yes! Yes! Woo! Yes! 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 And by the way, this just in. I mean, this is, you know, it was, it was news that um, from their phone calls to the superdelegates and, to, and, and, you know, adding up the math of, of sort of late breaking delegates that she crossed the threshold. Because the fact that she was going to cross the threshold actually before the voting got to California was not news. It was not news. Projected votes actual votes. Projected plus actual One of the moments that jumped out at me, um, one of the conservatives over there was being asked, name some economic expert who thinks that leaving is the right thing. Right. And the conservative politician said, we are sick of listening to experts. Screw the experts. Um, and, I, and you see there, as here, a lot of people saying institutions and experts are not leading us in the right direction. Well, because they, think, ah. they failed us miserably, that's why. They all told us that deregulating derivatives would be a good thing, and it wasn't, and it crashed the economy. Okay, so the experts have discredited themselves. I get that. And that's in every sector, by the way. Except for the United States military, we don't trust a single institution in this country. Right. And that you see that all around the world. They don't even trust our military around the world. But we have a real crisis with that. And that's legitimate to say, well, I'm not so sure I want to listen to these so-called experts. And I think that's part of what happened in, in Brexit. At the same time, I think we ought to have uh, more faith in each other. I, I really take offense at Bernie supporters thinking that Hillary voters are somehow too dumb to sort through it. You're smart enough to figure out who's better, but the Hillary people are just sheep and they're stupid. They just follow what means to be your sense. It is an insult to older voters and people of color, which is Hillary's coalition. The same way that I would never insult Bernie's coalition, because they're, they're really smart people who figured out for themselves who would be best. I think people have to be real careful about being too paternalistic well, and condescending to Hillary voters who are uh, smart people as well and they can figure out who they are for. Phil, I want to take this to Martin Wilkoff and talk to you about this.
part of Bernie's struggle was people of color, right? In states where there were a large, 10 percent of the electorate were black, he loses, except for Michigan, right? And you consist, and he he got kind of easy votes. He got Michelle Alexander, uh, Rosaria Dawson, uh, you know, part of the community. Did he killer Mike campaign for him all around the country. Right, but you know, he never was able to turn it around with black and brown people. Really, what happened there? Boy, I have no idea how to answer this question without being booed, but I'm going to just embrace it. <laughs> yeah, it's not possible. <laughs> no, I'm just going to embrace it. It's not stop with them. The, the problem for Bernie Sanders, I think, and I work on a lot of campaigns in California, so I've seen a lot of polling, uh, particularly in heavy Latino areas. Um, voters, you can't group all groups together, but what I saw, what I saw in the polling data was that voters were, were in black and brown communities, we're looking for tangible ways that progress is going to be made. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that Paul Begala has taught me about politics is that presidential elections are about two key issues. Who's the stronger leader? Who's on your side? And so I think a lot of voters went to the polls, the majority of voters in the Democratic primary went to the polls, and in considering who's the stronger leader, Hillary was, and in who's on your side, it was a choice between Hillary Clinton who people had the perception of having detailed plans and uh, ways that she was going to accomplish the things that she was going to do, though not as big as Bernie Sanders, still more tangible. And it didn't feel like fantasy, it felt like something that she actually had the wherewithal to get done. And I think that for, and I think that for many voters, that was Bernie Sanders' problem. Because not all Americans want a revolution, <laughs> Americans want better wages. Yeah. and lower education costs, and lower health care costs, and things like that. And that doesn't necessarily have to come with a revolution. And that's, that's, that was Bernie Sanders' Gene, problem. in a lot of ways, black and brown people need a revolution in this country. Bernie was talking about that. And, and same question to you, black, black and brown people did not get behind him. Yeah. Why not? Well, um, you know, I actually think Bernie uh, eventually crafted um, a, a pretty attractive message for uh, black and brown people in this country. The, the, the problem is it took him too long. He didn't have it at first. Uh, and, you know, people said, okay, there's this other guy running, there's Hillary and there's this other guy, what does he have to say? And he didn't at, initially have anything to say. And so people voted for Hillary. Um, and, and, and she racked up enormous vote totals throughout the South, in, around the big cities <coughs> in the rest of the country. Uh, and the rest of the rest is history. Well, black and brown voters, let me, just, let me just add to that. Black and brown voters are also historically, modern history anyway, not quite as progressive as white liberals in our party. And if you look at the voters who voted for Bill Bradley and for Howard D, it was a much whiter set of voters. And that's just, you know, white liberals are for candidates like Bernie Sanders and Howard Dean because for a lot of different reasons, but they are more attracted to the sense of revolution. But it's also practicality. And I'd say the question to you, and I think one of the seminal moments in this particular conversation was, uh, you know, when Bernie's stage was uh, invaded by Black Lives Matter, and he didn't know what to say. And, you know, somebody who I believe from the beginning in his heart would be in the right place in his issues, somebody who'd been part of the civil rights movement, That's right. but just didn't know what to say, and that hurt me, right? right. So, what, so what, why? What, what happened there? That was problematic, but I think anyone who gets, you know, approached in that way without expecting it usually has a moment where they're flustered and they don't know how to uh, deal with it. You know, something very similar happened um, just a few months ago to Hillary Clinton, where she was approached by a young woman who is also a Black, uh, a Black Lives Matter activist, and Hillary Clinton was very dismissive of her and said, well, if you don't like it, maybe you should go <laughs> It's 
one thing to sit here and say that, oh no, the establishment media doesn't choose sides and we're not doing it. I mean, we have individuals on this panel right now that have worked for the Clinton campaign. Exactly. <laughs>
I, we just have differences of policy. It's a standard right. political answer. What the headline basically read was, Hillary questions his qualifications. And what Bernie did was he saw that either somebody handed it to him, or he glanced at it, didn't read the article, walked on stage and questioned her qualifications, which was not what she did. And that was an unfair reversal attack and the first real negative hit against him playing dirty against her. And I think that's when the drift started to happen. That you could almost pin his poll numbers to that moment. And, but the, 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 and the, the gun thing is, a, is triangulation. And the, the gun issue was triangulation as a politician, period. The question that I put to you was about Bernie and black voters. And you pivoted, and I want to get you back on the point. Because one of the moments that really disappointed me in terms of Bernie <laughs> being this revolutionary politician, and he was, um, is uh, when he said that reparations was divisive. And, you know, I'm like, well, if you can support all these sorts of things, then why is that out of the out of the line out of line for you? But he's a, I didn't understand. Plus, everything's that. divisive these days. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know why he said that, um, and I don't necessarily agree with him on that. And that's something that I would openly say that I disagree with him on. Um, but I think that what Bernie Sanders lacks, and what I think is actually the best part about him, but maybe it worked against him, is that he's not a polished politician. You know, he speaks off the cuff. He's not as well prepared to play three-dimensional chess and play all the games that other politicians do. And there's a huge chunk of the country that loves that about him, and then there's a huge chunk of the country that is so used to seeing what we've seen for decades that they get turned off by it. So I completely understand that. But the reality is he's not the kind of person who's, you know, carefully, strategically planning every step and every move. And he answers questions as honestly as he can. Yeah. Whether people like it or not, Let's, let's pick up on that point about Bernie's personality, his self-presentation was non-traditional vis-a-vis politicians. Right. Part of his appeal, Absolutely. part of why some part of the electorate was not uh, open to him. That's was, not that's not right. Okay. It was part of his appeal. The people who were against him, they liked Hillary better. It's so patronizing to say that, oh, he's just too good, and the majority of Democrats are just stupid and, and superficial, and they couldn't appreciate his authenticity. He has real authenticity. He does, but you know, more people wanted Hillary, and that's authentic too, and that's just how the votes came out. And I just, I really am troubled by this kind of constant patronization of the majority of people in my party who chose somebody other than Hillary. They didn't pick him, they didn't pick her because they couldn't appreciate Bernie's uh, authenticity. They picked Hillary because they preferred Hillary. They thought she'd be better on the issues that they care about. I don't think, I don't think that anyone's sitting here and saying that Hillary voters are dumb. I just think that the types of people that vote for Hillary are very different from, you know, the very young voters, obviously, that go for Bernie. As I mentioned earlier, look, I'm, I'm part of the generation, so I feel the pain that everyone else is feeling, right? When you go to college, you get your master's degree, you have a career, you're working your full-time job, and you still can't manage to buy that $300,000 home in a shitty neighborhood in Los Angeles. Somebody who wears where Bernie is on guns, which is a critical issue for Dems and for public mm -hmm. yeah. options. Can, can you can I mean could you succeed at all? He seemed to be super progressive in some areas and not in that not in that area. Well, you know, the guns thing was was problematic. I frankly don't think a lot of people voted on that okay. on that issue uh, in, in the primaries. I think um, you know, I would I would dispute one thing that, that was said, which is that all of Hillary voters were just fine uh, and think yeah. everything is just dandy. That's not true. You know, look at the exit polls, look at the numbers. A lot of poor folks who are struggling voted for Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, and, 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 and I mean, that's just that's just objectively true. I think 
the notion that if you know if if Bernie had only done this, or if the media had only done that, or if one you know these little two things had been different, um, Bernie Sanders would be the nominee today, is just not true. There are three million things that would have had to go differently, which is the three million people who voted for Hillary who didn't vote for Bernie. I mean, that, you know, they all would have had to make different decisions, and they voted for Hillary. Right, whether I get, like it, whether you like it, they did. We've got eight minutes left, and I want to do two things. I'm going to do one thing with Paul, and then one thing with all of you guys. Because um, I asked my friend Crystal Ball, what should I ask, you know, this panel? Because she's been super pro Bernie since day one. Um, and she said, I want you to ask Paul Begala this question. Why is it that so many young voters distrust Hillary Clinton? Because I don't think we've ever had a presidential candidate who had been this famous for this long before he or she ran. And Ronald Reagan is a movie star, they kind of close. Yeah. But it is really difficult to be in the spotlight that long. And she has stumbled. She has made a I think the email thing. By the way, I, I, I love Hillary. The day the email story broke, I said on the air, every government employee should use government email. This was a mistake. So I, I have criticized her, even though I love her. She has made mistakes. She's paid a political price for those mistakes. But a lot of it is simply because she's been dancing in that spotlight for a quarter century. And so young people coming up, I think with some uh, understandable justification, say, well, you've been there all that time, and things are screwed up. Yeah. Ergo, I, I think she's been fighting against the things that have screwed those young people. But I can understand why someone says, look, she's been up there for so long. And, and that's, that's, therefore, I'm not going to trust her. But you know what? A testament to her strength is the flip side of that, which is, even though she's been under the media spotlight for so long and has taken on so much criticism, she, even so, has been in the top three of most admired women in the world for 25 years. And she's still, at the end of that period, is in a position where she's the nominee of the Democratic Party. I mean, it's impressive about who she is as a person that she's been able to All right, look, we have, we have... Okay. We have four minutes left. I apologize, but we are not able to take questions. That is not my you decision. That is what I'm... Where is security? Where is security? Please, oh, ma'am. Seriously? 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 Come on. Come on. Uh, this is not my decision. This, I don't... Not, this is not my decision. What is this what? But no, 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 no. But the last, the last point to each of you. I the message here, the success of Bernie Sanders, is the message that the Democratic Party is not as progressive as it could be, as it perhaps should be, and the Democrats will have to take that message seriously going forward in future elections. Uh, first of all, I, uh, I would like to say openly that uh, questioning that my gender is somehow negatively affects my political view or my desire for the benefit of this country is kind of rude. Um, honestly, I, I wouldn't do it for anybody, period. Uh, that being said, by what she just said, I don't know if you heard. Anyways, point being, uh, here, I think Bernie is the second coming of Occupy. I think Occupy came out, had an incredible message, was important in dealing with what was going on with Wall Street, and festered and died, went nowhere. There were no Occupy mayors, there were no Occupy, um, you know, state senators, and there goddamn should have been. And, and the second round is not the win, necessarily, but it's the comeback that leads to finally getting there. This is, you know, we're a hierarchical system, it takes time to find a base. Build, refine who the leaders will be. Pick who you're going to go. That's always how it's been. It's how everybody on this panel, everyone, has gotten their job and actually beaten out other people to be able to speak wherever they're speaking. It's how it works, and that's okay. And it may not even be the attorney second here. He may be, you know, the, the third of five. Who knows? But it's an important step. The difference is it has to result in state senate, local judges, local schools. <laughs> about yourselves is bullshit. You have to run on the base level. He was an independent, he was an independent, he was an independent who borrowed the infrastructure of the Democratic Party for his own goddamn run. And you have to respect the fact that he didn't have one. He didn't have an establishment, so he borrowed theirs. And you can't complain about it. You've got to start building one. The best thing that can happen in this country is that we have the Green Party and the Democrats fighting to make a better country. The Republicans are going to collapse like a plan in a cupboard. I don't think the Democratic Party is as progressive as it ought to be. Yes! Um, in Minnesota with uh, Paul Wellstead. 
And I think if you could build the perfect presidential candidate in the laboratory, it would have Paul Wellstone's backbone and Bernie Sanders' sense of uh, unfairness in this country. And Gavin Newsom's entire physical structure. <laughs> 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 Hillary Clinton's like ability to get stuff done. And you know what? You can't though. Right? We're in a system made of people who are with parents and they weren't they aren't from laboratories. And so I think that we should keep fighting like Hal says to like build something that's more progressive and build on the progress that we've made here. But part of that is winning this presidential election. And not letting Donald Trump become president of the United States. So, like, go take over California. I mean, yeah. you know, which is a, like a great thing to do. Take over some state capitals uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and run, uh, and after the next census, run the redistricting process. Uh, so, so they're not gerrymandered out of a, a potential majority uh, in, in the House of Representatives. Um, and, you know, that's real politics. And so, take this and build it. Well, can Hillary Clinton be more progressive? She is progressive. She I think she's so I think I think I think Let me just give you some facts. <laughs> Hillary Clinton and Bernie served in the Senate together for several years. I think three or four years they overlapped in the Senate. When they did, they voted together 93% of the time. Right. So if they're on Match.com, they'd be dating. And Hillary is a progressive. <laughs> What I, I echo what these guys are saying. You all have to decide if you want a movement or a monument, right? If this is to be a cult of personality or something like this, right? I want this thing to continue. I, I think it's terrific what Senator Sanders has done, but it should not simply be about Senator Sanders. And I don't remember names. It ought to be. It ought to be about us. And if, if you all think the way to make America more progressive is to engage in the long term, I'm with you. If you think it's just like, okay, we just cast vote and go home, and no. you're gonna, or, or I'm disappointed that my guy, who's 7% more liberal than Hillary, didn't win, and I'm going to stay home, oh, well, welcome to Donald Trump. Trump. That's the choice. It's a binary oh. choice. If, they, if folks like y'all like stay home, you have that perfect right to do so in this country, you're going to get Donald Trump. So people like me and Hillary have to reach out to you, but at the same time, you have to be open to something that isn't 93% Bernie Sanders voting rights. Anna, you're, 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 last word to you. If you look forward to the Democratic Party four years, eight years, would you say, look at the success of Bernie, not that he didn't win, but that he was incredibly successful. You need to be more progressive to continue to take care of all the people in the Democratic Party. That's absolutely what I would say. Right now, according to a recent poll, 55% of Sanders supporters said that they plan on voting for Hillary Clinton. I agree with Paul Begala. It's up to Hillary Clinton's campaign, the Democratic Party, the DNC specifically, to reach out sure. to those supporters and actually focus on the policy ideas that made Bernie Sanders as popular as he's been. Um, and as long as... Did Bernie voters vote for Hillary? I think the Bernie voters should vote for the person that they feel represents them the best. <laughs> Jill Stein! Jill Stein! Yeah.